Who's better, Jill Valentine versus Laura Croft? Let's find out. Warning, spoilers ahead for Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and the Resident Evil 3 Remake, as well as the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot. On one side, we have Jill Valentine, born in 1974, age 24 during the events of Resident Evil 1 and 3, and on this side, we have Laura Croft, born in 1992, age 21, during the events of Tomb Raider 2013. Both Jill and Laura are very resilient women who have been through tumultuous times where they must adapt for survival. Both started off their franchises back in 1996, and while Jill Valentine made appearances in several of the Resident Evil games, Obviously, Laura Croft is the titular Tomb Raider. Jill Valentine has had extensive military training and is currently an active duty law enforcement officer with STARS. Laura Croft doesn't have this same military background, but has been exposed to a life of adventure through her father's exploits as an archaeologist. You know, in the same way Indiana Jones is an archaeologist. Round one has to go to Jill. Both of our contestants meet with tragedy and pure horror early in their careers. Jill's is when the STARS team is dispatched to investigate ritual murders and stumble upon a zombie-infested mansion full of the darkest aspects of man's penchant for terror. Laura crashes upon an island full of a murderous death cult and keeps wading through literal piles of bodies, not to mention the most metal scene ever to appear in a video game. Seriously, folks, she legit rises out of a river of blood to avenge the deaths of her friends and crewmates while trying to rescue who's left. Well, I'm a little worried Laura may be discovering that she's a psychopath. I have to hand it to both Jill and Laura for handling unspeakable horror and coming out the other side, rescued people in tow, a point for each. Now, you can survive terror, but how are you handling things afterwards? That's our next category. Jill Valentine, in the wake of the mansion incident, continues to push against Umbrella's villainous deeds, going so far as to tackle the corruption within Raccoon City PD, getting her suspended and on Umbrella's watch list. She makes efforts to create escape plans only to be launched into yet another desperate bid for survival as the nemesis stalks her throughout the events of Resident Evil 3. Laura Croft, on the other hand, at the end of the 2013 Tomb Raider game, states she isn't going home, but looks over a book full of information about new destinations, hinting at the sequels, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Sure, Laura later discovers Trinity in organization bent on control, but at this point, she's just learned that maybe her father's wild stories had a grain of truth and perhaps wants to look into them. Meanwhile, Jill is actively working to dismantle a global organization bent on destroying our world. I've got to give the point to Jill on this one. When you're up against an extra tough baddie, who you have in your corner can be equally as important when evaluating your efficacy. When we look at the two and their crew, Jill once again has the upper hand. Carlos Oliveira, as well as her fellow STARS partners, Chris Redfield and Barry Burton, who are well-trained and talented guys that are there and ready to help Jill out when it counts. Jill loses touch with Carlos after the events of Resident Evil 3, as he leaves the country to go into hiding. As far as Laura Croft, in the 2013 reboot, she has a capable team, with Roth, Jonah, Grimm, and Reyes being the most capable among them. Jonah ends up being a stalwart companion to Laura over the entire trilogy, and his service in the New Zealand Army would have given him at least basic training, Roth's service in the Marines and Grimm's service in the Merchant Navy would have given them transferable skills as well. But 
Laura unfortunately loses both of them during the misadventures of the first Tomb Raider game. Finally, Reyes was an NYPD officer and the security chief of the Endurance, a talented companion to be sure, but she doesn't go on to support Laura in future games. Here, Laura comes out with the one dedicated companion. Meanwhile, Jill ends up with two who are active in her life and willing to support her in the future. So we'll have to give Jill the point in this category. For our next category, if our characters swapped franchises, could they each survive? This is where it gets interesting. Laura has killed dozens, if not hundreds, by the end of the first game in the Survivor Trilogy, and has faced off against what are basically super soldier, supernatural zombies in the form of Queen Hamako's Storm Guard and the Oni. Jill, on the other hand, hasn't really killed anyone who isn't zombified. Even at the end of Resident Evil 3, she chooses not to kill Nikolai, despite him killing others in her presence and constantly undermining her and the UBCS's efforts to save civilians. Would Jill defend herself against someone trying to attack her? Absolutely. Would she let loose an arrow at an unsuspecting person who hasn't yet proven to be an enemy? I'm not so sure. Laura, on the other hand, would absolutely be mowing down zombies left, right, and center. And as much as folks roast the Resident Evil 3 remake for being too short, it would have been much shorter if Laura Croft were the protagonist, because she would have shot Nikolai at the beginning of the game and would have eliminated quite a few sections of the game as a result. While Jill's approach would have probably made Tomb Raider a longer game and Laura Croft's approach would have made Resident Evil 3 a shorter game, I do think the end result would have been the same. I've got to give each of our contestants a point for this one. And for our final category, who would win in a fight head to head? As we've seen over the course of this video, Laura Croft is absolutely going to kill people before establishing whether they are friend or foe. Meanwhile, Jill Valentine will give folks the benefit of the doubt. I think Jill would try and reason with Laura first before deciding that violence was necessary. Meanwhile, we've all seen just how many times Laura is fine to start shooting or strangling and then ask questions later. We have to award Laura on this one. Who knew Nikolai was right? So is the takeaway here that Laura Croft is a serial killer? Maybe. <laughs> But our overall point total is Jill 5, Laura 3. And I think we have to hand it to Jill Valentine as the victor. But lesson learned, never cross a croft. So who else should I be comparing head to head? Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll need to make another video to see who comes out on top. All of my sources used for this video are included in the description below. And Help me defeat the algorithm by liking and subscribing if you think I've earned it. Until next time, I'll holler at y'all later.